All right, Salim Razai here, and we're gonna be talking about determining if a patient who's presenting with GI bleed, if that bleed is upper versus lower. And there are a few things that we can look at to help us determine this. So these include, does the patient have hypotension? Is there bright red blood per rectum with clots? Or does the patient have hematemesis? BUN creatinine ratio, which we'll talk about, and then NG lavage. So first of all, if a patient presents and they're hemodynamically unstable, they have hypotension. Just assume this patient has an upper GI bleed. It's the more common type of bleed. Upper is always going to be more common than lower, but it's also associated with a higher mortality. So just assume that it's upper and treat as such. Now, bright red blood per rectum with clots versus hematemesis. Well, this is pretty straightforward. If you're seeing clots, assume lower GI bleed. If you're seeing hematemesis, then this is most likely an upper GI bleed. That's probably one of the most straightforward things to look at. Clots in the stool decrease the likelihood of upper GI bleed with a likelihood ratio of 0.05. So this is a pretty strong negative likelihood ratio. BUN to creatinine ratio. So this was something I learned in medical school and was on the boards in residency. And so the question is, is how good is this? And so a BUN to creatinine ratio of greater than 30 has a specificity of 93% and a positive likelihood ratio of 7.5. Anything greater than 10 on that likelihood ratio is a very positive likelihood ratio. So 7.5 is okay, but this can at least help guide you. So if you have a BUN to creatinine ratio greater than 30, just suspect upper GI bleed. And then finally, NG lavage. I've ranted on this topic. I still can't believe we're talking about this so many years later. It's a painful procedure for patients, and it's never been shown to improve any clinically meaningful outcomes for our patients. The only thing it's been shown to do is get our gastroenterology colleagues in a little bit sooner so that endoscopy happens faster. And the good news is the American College of Gastroenterology says in upper GI bleed, NG lavage is not required for diagnosis, prognosis, visualization, or therapeutic effects. So their own guidelines support not using NG lavage. So there you have it. Upper versus lower GI bleed in your patients presenting with bleeding. Low blood pressure, assume upper GI bleed. Bright red blood per rectum with clots, assume lower GI bleed. BUN to creatinine ratio greater than 30, assume upper GI bleed. NG lavage, not helpful. Well, there you have it. Leave me your thoughts, comments, and questions, and until next time.